Hello and welcome back to Wildlife Hotel. I'm Eric. And I'm Jeffrey. We spent 26 days adventuring in Japan and we went everywhere from Tokyo to Osaka and everywhere in between. Japan is an incredible place, a truly life-changing experience for the both of us. And we wouldn't be us if we didn't share those adventures with you. Today we share with you our adventure at the Toyota Automobile Museum in Nagoya, Japan. One of the things I have always loved about Japan is its cars. From its itty bitty K cars I wish I could fit into, to the industry changing economy vehicles, and especially their lightweight fun sports cars, which I've owned a couple of myself. So when visiting Japan, a little automotive tourism was a must for me, and luckily Eric was willing to tolerate it and may just have had some fun, even if he's not the biggest gearhead on the planet. Yeah, I really liked how they laid it out so you could see the progression of design throughout history. And let me tell you, there are some wild car designs out there. Look, this one has parachute pants. We stayed in a business hotel right outside of Nagoya Station, Japan's largest railway hub and an amazing place to get lost in all its own, with its complex of malls, shops, restaurants, and spaces all connected to the various rail lines. From here, it took us two trains, about 700 yen, and an hour of time to get from our hotel to the museum, where our fun really got started. I've always had a love of all things Toyota, so I wanted to make sure to visit their museum in Nagoya, which I've always heard is truly spectacular. And while it wasn't the museum of every Toyota ever made I had sort of expected it would be, what it was was so much more than that. It's a collection of important cars throughout history and from across the world. Some of them so rare they barely exist, but all of them important to the history of cars. We should have expected a culture as modest as the Japanese not to have a museum that just brags about their own accomplishments, but rather recognizes their place in automotive history. Don't worry, there are plenty of cool Toyotas here, but that's literally just the beginning and never the focus. As soon as we walked through the door, a 1970 Nissan Skyline GTR greeted us and I knew I was in the right place. The museum has a main building with three floors displaying their cars by decade and showcasing some of the technological advances, dead ends, and fashion trends the auto industry has brought us over the years. No matter what kind of cars you're into, they have something here to excite you, or if you're like me, they all do. I especially love their room dedicated to rally cars and their giant hall of hood ornaments and model cars, but they also have a massive library of automotive books, a restaurant, a cafe, and rotating displays. Don't forget to visit the gift shop and get a Toyota 4AGE. Did I say that right? Yeah. Engine replica from a gachapon machine or some commemorative Toyota museum themed box curry. Yum. There's another Toyota Museum in Nagoya, which we didn't have time to visit this trip, the Toyota Commemorative Museum of Industry and Technology. It's about 20 miles away, an hour by train at most times, which focuses on the entire history of all things Toyota and the importance of technology and creativity in our lives with less of an automotive focus. In fact, Nagoya as a whole feels like a city we wish we stayed in for much longer, and we plan to come back and show you much more of Nagoya in the future, like the recently opened Ghibli Park, the aquarium, and so much more. Thank you so much for joining us today. Japan was a truly life-changing experience and we are so excited to share our adventures with you. If you're interested in more videos from our trip to Japan, follow the link on the right to see more. Until next time, have an adventure.